In our morning rounds, a powerful warning about the wide-ranging threat of strokes. They are a leading cause of severe disability in the U.S. One out of six people will suffer a stroke in his or her lifetime. Dr. Tara Narula shows us why everyone needs to be aware of the risk and how to respond. Tara, good morning. Good morning. When most people think of strokes, they probably think of the elderly. But strokes happen to young people, too. Some of them have risk factors like smoking, obesity, or high blood pressure. But others are perfectly healthy, as we found out when we traveled to Edgewater, Maryland, and met Tara O'Keefe. Is it fair to say that this past year was the most challenging year of your life? That's very fair to say. The first four and five months especially were just devastating. Devastating because despite competing in marathons and triathlons, not smoking and eating healthy, at the age of 40, Tara O'Keefe had a stroke. It happened one day last spring after a tennis match. What happened then when you went home after the match? You know, I got the headache. I remember just thinking it was pr lower than usual. It was really at the very base of my head. There really wasn't anything at that point that scared you so much to make you say, something's really not right, I need to go to the hospital. I thought that I was having a migraine. I've never had a migraine in my life. She also was having trouble with her vision. I just remember thinking that it looked like I was looking through a really thin layer of water. O'Keefe tried to sleep it off, but after nearly two days, her husband Chris insisted she go to the emergency room. It was within 30 minutes that I walked into the emergency room that they had told me that I had a stroke, and I was looking at Chris, and just the look on his face, is it was a shock beyond all shocks. Approximately 800,000 people have a stroke every year. About 10% are under the age of 50. Strokes happen when blood flow to the brain is interrupted, often caused by bleeding or a blocked blood vessel. O'Keefe had something known as a dissection, which is a tear in the lining of a blood vessel wall and can disrupt the flow of blood. Yale neurologist Kevin Sheth says common, everyday movements can cause a dissection. It can be as simple as turning your head, coughing, vomiting, turning your head back, uh, performing in other kinds of athletic activities. O'Keefe lost 30 percent of her peripheral vision. Her recovery became more challenging when doctors told her to cut back on exercise. That's when her aunt stepped in, New York Times columnist Maureen Dowd, who recently wrote about their experience. She was really the one that pushed you to get a second opinion. Oh, yeah. She would call and leave messages and send me emails and articles. So what happened when you got the second opinion? He said, well, yeah, if you want to play tennis, play tennis. If you want to run a marathon, go run a marathon. He's like, you don't have any restrictions. Did you go running that day? That next morning, immediately. It was the first thing I do. I woke up and I put my clothes, running clothes on and, and I went and I just felt like that my life was going to start again. You were back. I was back. A year later, O'Keefe says she's sharing her story as a reminder that strokes aren't just for the old, and sometimes it's worth listening to family. When there's people in your life that are pushing, even though you may want them to just leave you alone, I think let them push because they're, you're not alone. And if you're that person pushing someone to seek treatment for a possible stroke, it's critical to act fast and get to the hospital or a doctor. Time is of the essence, and immediate treatment can prevent long-term brain damage. One more time, underline what you feel so that you know it's serious. So most common symptoms would be weakness on one side of your body or your face, difficulty speaking or understanding language, difficulty walking or problems with your vision. In particular, with dissection-type strokes, pain can be very prominent. It's going to pain in the back of the neck or headache. So call, call the doctor thing. and get there get, if you call feel Call 911, bad. get to the hospital as quick as possible. Boy, and thank, thank you, yeah. Cousin Maureen, who didn't yeah. have exactly. to go. No. Yes, yeah. family was very important in this case. I'll say. I think that's a great warning because you never think someone that healthy Absolutely. Yes. could have a stroke. That's right. And she's a good tennis player, too. <laughs> yes. I like that. <laughs> Got nice strokes. Thank you, Dr. Tara.